whooping cough, which is also known as pertussis, is still one of the most common vaccine preventable diseases worldwide and can cause symptoms such as coughing, vomiting and whooping, which is the characteristic sound which someone makes when they take a deep breath in after a particularly severe bout of coughing. In the UK, children are given a primary course of pertussis vaccinations during infancy, followed by a preschool pertussis booster vaccination about three years later. The main aim of vaccination is to try and prevent transmission of pertussis to unvaccinated infants, in whom pertussis can lead to serious or even fatal complications. However, in countries where the socio-economic burden of pertussis in older age groups is high, an additional adolescent pertussis booster vaccine may also be worthwhile. Adolescent pertussis booster vaccinations have already been introduced in several countries, including the United States, Australia, France and Germany. However, discussions as to whether an adolescent booster should also be introduced in the UK are still ongoing. Before the preschool pertussis booster vaccination was introduced in the UK in 2001, evidence of recent pertussis infection could be found in nearly two-fifths of school-aged children who presented in primary care with a persistent cough. However, what is not known is whether pertussis is still an important cause of persistent cough among these children even after the introduction of the preschool booster, so that is what our study was aiming to find out. We recruited children between the ages of 5 and 15 years who presented in primary care with a persistent cough which had been going on for between 2 and 8 weeks. We recruited children between November 2010 and December 2012 from 22 general practices located across the Thames Valley region. To find out which children had pertussis, we obtained an oral fluid sample from each child who took part in our study. We then sent these samples to the laboratory at Public Health England for analysis to measure levels of anti-pertussis toxin IgG. We also explored the clinical severity of cough in children with pertussis by seeking consent to obtain cough recordings from these children so that we could count the number of times they coughed in a 24-hour period. In total, we found evidence of recent pertussis infection in one-fifth of children who took part in our study and in one-sixth of children who had been fully vaccinated against pertussis. We managed to obtain cough recordings from six children who had been fully vaccinated against pertussis and found that four out of these six children coughed more than 400 times in a 24-hour period. We also observed that the risk of pertussis more than tripled from around 12% to nearly 40% in children who had received their preschool pertussis booster vaccination seven years ago or longer. However, this finding may have been confounded by age-related changes in herd immunity and pertussis exposure. Although all the children who took part in our study were recruited from Thames Valley, the temporal variations in quarterly pertussis detection rates which we observed in our study were very similar to those which were observed across the whole of England and Wales in the same age group. Furthermore, the general practices which took part in our study served populations which encompassed a broad spectrum of socio-economic deprivation, so our findings are still likely to be highly generalisable. So in summary, evidence of recent pertussis infection can still be found in one-sixth of fully vaccinated school-aged children who present in primary care with a persistent cough, and pertussis can still cause clinically significant cough in these children. These findings will help inform discussions about whether an adolescent pertussis booster vaccination should be introduced in the UK and highlight the need for more research to establish the true burden of pertussis among school-aged children and adolescents. Thank you for listening and please get in touch if you have any questions.